Hi, I'm John Paterschnik. Finally back with this painting. You probably saw, hopefully you saw, uh, part one and part two of the process, the progress of this painting. Part one showed the drawing and uh, some application of color. And then part two uh, video of this painting was the completed block in. What you're looking at now is where the painting stands today. You can see there's been more work done on it since the second video. Um, but I had to put it aside. Unfortunately, I had a self-imposed deadline, which I did not meet. And so I had to put it aside and I've worked on a number of other paintings since then. But now I'm back on this and hopefully we'll be able to put in a real uh, concentrated effort and time on this painting to bring it to uh, completion. We'll just see how that goes. Remember uh, in the first two videos, I said that I was going to show you the color study, the preliminary work that I did for this painting. And uh, I wanted to show it to you now. I didn't show it initially because I had it covered in mylar and I couldn't get a good photograph of it and I didn't want to remove the mylar at the time. So here is the study that I'm using to, for color and composition. It is not, uh, you can't copy this study uh, stroke for stroke, it would be impossible. This study is seven and a half by 15 inches where the canvas behind me is 35 by 65 inches. Those of you that are, have, are discerning would realize that these two pieces are not proportional. I have, year, for years and years, all during my teaching, I've told students, whatever you do, whenever you do preliminary work, be sure and make the, make the canvas that you select the exact proportion of your preliminary work, or you're gonna to have to change it up, change up your, the composition. And sure enough, that's what happened to me, but, this canvas behind me ought to be 35 by 70 rather than 35 by 65. But I thought, you know, I've got the canvas uh, ready to be painted on. It was already stretched, ready to go. And I thought, well, five inches for this size of a canvas, I think I can uh, make it work compositionally and not have, uh, you know, not, not that there not be a, a huge different, noticeable difference. So I didn't keep, uh, I don't, didn't do in this case what I tell my students to do, but hopefully you understand uh, the reasons why. I had to laugh because I've already attempted doing this video now several times, and when I was talking about color, I was, I was creating oranges with uh, blue and yellow, and <laughs> then I realized about halfway through that discussion that now you can't create oranges with blue and yellow. So I had to, this is what my third effort or so now in trying to do this video. But I wanted to say on the painting behind me on the easel, uh, because of the delay in time between, um, you know, when I last did the video, it's set a while, the color has sunken in. And so I put a coat of liquid on this. Liquid, what it does, it makes all your paints look wet again. So those that have sunken in and dried and the value appears to have changed and the color's not as rich, liquid brings that all back. And so that's what you're seeing here. The painting has been coated with liquid. Now the next step for me is to mix the palette. And as I've said in the earlier videos that I'm using a three color palette, the palette is ultramarine blue, a alizarin crimson, and cadmium yellow pale. But on my palette, I have a 12 color. There's 12 colors on my palette plus white. So this is a color chart mixed with just those three primaries. And I'm using this as the guide to uh, create the, the mixtures on my palette. This is not perfect. This, this uh, chart was done some years ago. And I, looking back on it, I see it's got some flaws in it. Uh, there's not enough distinction between some of the color mixtures. But I'm still, I still use it as a guide, being aware that the fact that, you know, this is not perfect. So I adjust my, the colors on my palette slightly to get where, I, where they ought to be today. But um, as you can see in the darker side, the ultramarine blue there, and then next to that, the blue-violet, violet, violet 
and red violet. Those are very dark and they cannot be discerned just by mixing them. So a white has to be added to uh, see if I've got a distinct separation that one does look blue violet and one looks violet and one looks red violet. So the white added to those helps discern that. Uh, so we have blue, uh, ultramarine blue and lizard crimson and cadmium yellow pale. And then all these mixtures were made from that. So that is where we are today. I'm hoping that uh, you'll uh, follow these videos as I pr progress through. Hopefully I'll have, um, it'll be educational for you and have some uh, good information as we go through. And these paintings, I mean, they take me some time to do and I run into frustration uh, discouragement I think probably like about any artist does and so it's those things you as an artist you just have to work through whether you feel like it or not you have to work through it and keep going the the fun part of painting is the is the block in I mean that's fun and uh, very enjoyable and then the finish is is uh, fun too because you realize you're coming to an end and it's all your dreams and visions have come together here. It's the middle part that's the hard part and where you have to really push yourself through. I've overcome some of that, uh, some of those problems by working on a number of paintings at a time. I very seldom have just one painting going. It's more like six or seven possibly in the works at different times. So when I get discouraged or just need to step back and view what's really going on. If this is where I'm wanting to go, if the paintings come along okay, I'll put that painting aside a while and then I can have a better, uh, a clearer vision of it later after I haven't looked at it all day long, day after day after day. Anyway, thanks for tuning in. Um, go to my website if you would. It's John Potoshnik. P-O-T-O-T-S-C-H-N-I-K. You probably know that already. Uh, JohnPetoshnik.com. I also write a weekly blog. I encourage you to check that out. It's been uh, becoming more and more popular. Anyway, thanks for tuning in. And this will be part three. The next one, you'll see more progress on this painting. And um, hopefully it's going to come together really well. Thank you.